So people, if you guys don't know, Brecky is a Bitcoin artist. He works at Swan Bitcoin as well as the creative director there. Uh, we've been homies for about three years or so. And I've always been a huge fan of his work. And um, yeah, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to you wanted to mention? Uh, we agreed that you were going to ask me questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was going to respond. That was a question. Is there anything? <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I, you kind of hit it on the nail. I've been in Bitcoin for a while now. I went down the shitcoin rabbit hole and came out clean on the other side. Uh, hardcore Bitcoiner, I believe in Bitcoin. And I'm very passionate about making Bitcoin artwork and trying to get other people to make Bitcoin artwork. Um, just so we're clear, coding is also art. So I have a lot of respect for all you hackers out there. Um, and yeah, I'm a filmmaker by trade. That was my background originally. And I studied international relations before that. So I've got a lot of different things jumbling around in my head that have kind of led me to this point. So cool. let's talk Bitcoin and art. Let's talk Bitcoin and art. So that's the title of our uh, fireside chat today. And uh, what I wanted to do was actually just kind of highlight a couple of projects. Uh, so this is Brecky's website. And um, you can actually, it's like directly linked on his Twitter profile. But what he's done is uh, he's kind of highlighted a couple art pieces. So do you kind of want to just um, talk about maybe some of these art pieces? What was like your inspiration behind them? And uh, and yeah, maybe that's a good starting point for us to talk about. The kind of sure. Um well, I'll, I'll back up a little bit and say that I, only recently did I sort of find my medium. But I don't know if you believe in that sort of thing. But I was kind of all over the place before. I was working in resin and concrete and all these different things and trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And over the pandemic, um, I was listening to Preston Pish's podcast and Elise Colleen was on there. And uh, Preston always asked for a book recommendation. She recommended a book called The Agony and the Ecstasy, which is a biography of Michelangelo. Um, I devoured the book, listened to the audio book and basically said to myself, I, I got to fucking try this. Um, because sculpture in stone had always been something that interested me. And it was like, it's, I mean, how do you even start? I don't even know how I got started. Um, you know, nobody does it anymore. Um, and so I kind of had to figure out how, how you do that. Um, yeah, you're like a bit of a pioneer because nobody's done that. You could say I carved a niche for myself. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's going to be that kind of virus. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> yeah. I love dad jokes too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's, I guess we can go through them kind of. Let's, this one is called Awakening. And there's a plaster reproduction here. And the idea was sort of to capture that moment when the orange pill kicks in and you have that aha moment, that awakening, like oh my God, Bitcoin is something special. Bitcoin is something big. Um, so in spirit, it's sort of a self-portrait, although it's not actually my eye. And my hope is that people see it and kind of remember that their own moment. They think back, where were you when you first realized that Bitcoin was going to change the world and change your world? Um, so that's, that's that idea. And that's carved from, um, not Carrara marble, um, Calicotta marble, which is also from Carrara. Um, and you you sold this at Bitcoin Twenty Two on an auction, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been involved in the, the scarcity, which is like a lightning based auction website, um, and I've sold most of my art through them up until now. So you were able to receive zero point three Bitcoin over lightning? Uh, no, they do the they do the final uh, transaction so, on chain, ah. but the bidding is all through lightning. Oh, interesting, mm -hmm. crazy. Although you could technically place a bid on chain, it just you probably wouldn't win because it might take a little while. Yeah. Cool. And then, uh, oh, so there's like a video of, uh, do you want me to play this one or? Eh, if you want. It's basically this piece over here. This was my first piece in marble. And this, like, again, it's a uh, plaster reproduction. It's, if you want to play, it's like, I don't know, some cheesy Ave Maria music and a piece spinning around on a turntable. Um, but yeah, that's the, the original marble version, which I just shipped off to the buyer in Germany. Oh, wow. Yeah. Crazy. The buyer has not opened it yet. We went through this wow. crazy expensive crating pa like process and he's traveling and I don't know if it arrived in one piece or not. And I'm, it's killing me. <coughs> so yeah. But what was your inspiration uh, for this piece right here? So that one, I called it free yourself. So it's kind of on the nose, you know, using Bitcoin to free yourself. And, um, 
I had just read that Michelangelo biography, and you know, if you if you're familiar with Michelangelo, he has a whole series of sculptures um, where they almost appear to be freeing themselves from the block of stone itself, and so that was sort of the inspiration. Um, and I wanted to do my spin on that. So the idea, if you look at it, the the feet of the, I don't know, I kind of anthropomorphize the Bitcoin symbol a little bit in my mind, at least. The feet are almost like the knees are bent and it's about to spring itself out of the block of stone. That was sort of the idea there. I think I think that's kind of uh, poignant and apt because like for me in my Bitcoin journey, I feel like there's a level of me freeing my own self mm-hmm. as I've gotten down like the Bitcoin rabbit hole. And so it was pretty interesting. You have to. It's like every Bitcoiner has their own journey. Bitcoin's not going to do it for you, you know? Right. Uh, oh, okay. What about this one? Carved stone. <laughs> so, uh, this was the very first thing I carved in stone, and it is quite simple. It's basically my take on a rye stone, which if you are not familiar with a rye stone, rye stones are these large, giant limestone wheels, essentially, that were used as money on the Yap Islands in the South Pacific. And I wanted to kind of modernize it and uh, try to carve some, something because I had no idea what I was doing. And uh, I figured a round shape would be easy. It was not easy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I powered through. Can you guys explain what the device is in the middle? Sure, yeah. Uh, though that's an open dime. If you're not familiar with an open dime, it's made by a company called CoinKite, and it is a single-use Bitcoin wallet. Or not single-use, but you can basically send Bitcoin to the, to the device, to the address associated with it. Um, if you plug it in, you can ver- plug it into a computer, you can verify the amount that's on there. You can verify that no one else has access to the private keys, and you can. It's essentially like um, physicalizing Bitcoin. So I could take it and pay John. John can use it to pay Terence, and you could keep adding to it. And if you ever want to access the Bitcoin, you actually have to change the hardware, poke a needle through the hole that's here, um, then it'll reveal the private keys. And for me, I've been incorporating them into my artwork for a while now, just because I think they're really fun, cool, and beautiful device on their own. Yes, you there, Terrence. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Hi, good to meet you. Um, is it possible to pass that around? Uh, I wouldn't pass it around, but if people want to come up and touch it or look at it later, yeah, for sure. They're kind of fragile, right? Yeah, plaster oh, is, okay. yeah. If I dropped it, it would. Yeah. No, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence, you can steal it after the show. Is that Andy? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've got Andy Edstrom, the author of Why Buy Bitcoin, in the house. Let's go. Celebrity appearance. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Oh, there's another one right here. Bitcoin lives. That one's Come on, these are self-explanatory. Bitcoin, everyone says that Bitcoin is dead all the time, and so that was my response to Bitcoin people saying that. I wanted... A, but, but why the grass? Like uh, I wanted a planter for my yard. I, oh. This one I still have. <laughs> so I, I expected some profound. Uh, Not all art is like, profound. Like weed cracking through the cracks and surviving <laughs> through all that stuff. But okay. Yes, yeah. yes, Andrew, that. Okay, cool. So, I mean, those are really uh, cool examples of uh, Bitcoin art that you've done. And, like, what has the reception been like? And what has the experience been like for you just kind of going through this? Because you're, mm-hmm. you're, I feel like you're pioneering this stuff. Like, I don't see anybody else really like doing this kind of stuff except for. Maybe crypto graffiti, like, mm-hmm. but his art is a little bit different than what you're doing. Yeah, well, crypto graffiti, like he's definitely one of my inspirations. Like, he, if you don't know him, check him out. He's like one of the OG crypto artists. He's been doing it, or Bitcoin artists. His, his name is Crypto Graffiti. It's a little misleading, um, but he's been doing it forever. Um, but when I started doing stone, I think people were very like, "What the hell is this guy doing? He's carving stone." People still do that, um, and people really seem to gravitate toward it, towards it. They watch the, I, I put videos of me kind of doing it. And, you know, one person every now and then will be like, I expected to see more. I was, and I <laughs> like lower your time preference. And wait. <laughs> okay. It doesn't, this isn't pop art. It takes uh, days and uh, months. Hmm? Um, to kind of piggyback on that, has that been in your thought process in choosing to use stone? The idea of, yeah, that this was like, very good first form of mine was mm-hmm. stones. Interesting. I mean, I guess with the rye stone piece, it, it sort of was, it was, a lot of it was, it starts off because it's something I want to do. You know, like I, I have, I have a day job, but I have this need to be creative and create. And so I'm going to just do things that make me happy. Um, but stone is sort of, you know, the first, probably the first 
money of sorts, but the first art form of, of sorts. Um, you know, and anyone who's most Bitcoiners have read the Bitcoin standard and, you know, have heard the, you know, the idea that we, we, we want to go back to this, this world of sound money in which people value hard work and value things differently than they do now, you know, contrasted to the pop art and the NFTs that are out there. Um, and so that was definitely on my mind. And to me, working in stone just lines up so perfectly with the Bitcoin ethos, um, at least my Bitcoin ethos. Um, so, yeah. I, I really appreciated it when you were like tweeting those videos of you like working on it, because I felt like I was part of that journey mm -hmm. of, you, of your creative process and you creating the art um, and made me almost like emotionally attached to the stuff. I, I would have uh, made a bit of I own Bitcoin, but I actually, unfortunately, I don't. Lost it all on the boat. Lost it all on the boat. Lost accident. It all on the boat. <laughs> yeah. There were a few times when uh, I nearly. I nearly screwed that one up, like chipped, oh no, that one up. And I screwed, I chipped some things off that I was like, I was like, oh no, have I, have I ruined it completely? And I was able to save it and dig deeper. And, um, you know, to kind of what you were talking about, like American HODL, if you know who American HODL is, hit me up and he was like, bro, my heart was beating. Like, you can't do that to me. Um, so there, I don't know, there's something cool about sharing the journey, yeah. I think, as much as it is, it can be uncomfortable. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it makes you feel vulnerable, I guess, right? I think it's also partially a, prote a protection mechanism so that if I do screw up, like, people are aware of it and I'm not just like, oh, I screwed up, like, I don't know, does that make sense? Like, yeah. if I'm sharing things along the way, like, I don't know. It makes you more human, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Well, uh, yeah, I guess we can start, like, digging into some questions that I've prepared for you. Uh, so, yeah, like... We're, we want to talk about Bitcoin and art, and one of the intersections uh, that you kind of you and I chatted about before was you saw that there's some intersection between like proof of work, right? Proof of work and art, and so maybe first, to, can you briefly describe like what proof of work is in Bitcoin, and how do you think that like intersects with art specifically and the stuff that you're doing? Sure. Um, I mean, I won't get too technical on how proof of work works in Bitcoin, mostly because I probably would bungle it up if I were to try to tell you about it. But the idea is that you, there's you can't get something for nothing. Right. You know, we live in a world of money where they can just print it endlessly at almost near zero cost. Bitcoin fixes that, right? You know, you have to expend energy in order to generate Bitcoin. Um, and I think in the art world, we see something similar. And it's not a criticism of of artists. I think art and artists are are a reaction and a reflection of their times. And I don't think they're to blame if their art is bad or if their art is cheap or whatever like it's it's they're a product of the times they live in um but especially for me like i want us to get back to a world where art is not just good but it also it takes something to make it um you know i love i love pop art like i have nothing against it like something if something makes you happy that's amazing I and mean, no one else can take that away from you but there's a difference between you see michelangelo's david and you see a robot doing a co an exact copy and there are robots doing exact copies and one is more special um so that's i don't know that's how i feel about art and as much as i love pop art i think you know i personally value art that is good but also takes effort and takes mastery and takes the proof of work to get to that level where it can be created. Yeah, and like you put a lot of time into stuff like this because I remember I was like asking you, hey, let's go kick it, let's go to like the bungalow <laughs> and hang out, and you're like, nah, dude, I, I gotta work, <laughs> I gotta work on my art, and I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, but I guess it takes that much time, like, like basically your whole um, when you're not working, you're working on art. Mm -hmm. I gave, I mean, I gave myself a boot camp. Like I basically said for the next eight six to eight months, I'm gonna just focus mostly on artwork and teach myself how to do this. And now I'm trying to kind of, I'm still doing that, but I'm making more time for my social life because that's unsustainable. But I, you know, it does, it takes time. You know, if you're a coder, how many hours do coders spend alone in front of their computer working on their code? Like, I think these types of things, like nothing great is achieved without putting time in. Um, and I think we live in a world where a lot of people just want the easy way out and, Bitcoin fixes this? Does that, that mean uh, we're going to hang out soon? Yes. I don't know. Okay, yes. Cool. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, yeah, like, why Bitcoin art and why not crypto art? Like, when I when I look at, like, the crypto scene, I see so many um, 
opportunities for people to like make money and like sell an NFT or something. Um, but like, why, why are you choosing to um, focus on Bitcoin art specifically? Mm-hmm. Well, I think people define Bitcoin art and crypto art in many different ways. Um, when I hear crypto art, and when I see crypto art, most of the time, it has not very little to do with the underlying movement of cryptocurrency in general, whether or not you like crypto or not. Um, to me, Bitcoin art is the opposite. Bitcoin art might utilize the technology in some way. Maybe it incorporates an open dime. Maybe they're... Maybe they're making an NFT on Counterparty. Like maybe they're doing something that has like that. But to me, Bitcoin art has a purpose. Like to me, it is to start conversations about Bitcoin. It is to glorify Bitcoin. It is to uh, get people to go down the rabbit hole by seeing Bitcoin art. Like there's a political, there's a social element to it. And if you look at crypto art, it is a lot of people just trying to sell their art, which is great. Like people, artists getting empowered to reach new audiences. That's great. But you know. Most crypto artists could care less whether they're minting on Ethereum or any other shitcoin. Um, they're not. They're not there for the social movement of changing society. Maybe they have some other movement that they're focused on. But Bitcoin artists, I think, are different. And there are a number of Bitcoin artists now. If you're at the Bitcoin conference, for example, you probably saw a lot of them. And a lot of the art is about Bitcoin. It is about Bitcoiners and how Bitcoin is changing the world. It is not just happens to be associated with Bitcoin. So to me, that's the the, the key difference there. Um, another another facet you kind of wanted to talk about was the difference between um, public art and like private art, mm-hmm. right? Like, okay, well, first of all, what does that even mean? Like, what is public and private art, and like, why is that important? To me, it's like putting a statue in your private library or doing some guerrilla art on the side of a building when no one's looking to spread a message, right? Like, there's a propaganda aspect to Bitcoin art and. Propaganda, I think, is good. It's just a tool. It's neither good nor bad. Um, and so, to me, like I, I love working on these, and I'm going to continue doing these types of things. But the one thing that I have yet to do in a big way that I would like to do is something big that many people see, and that you know, like crypto graffiti. Again, one of my favorites. He had an incredible campaign where he raised money and put up a billboard in near near to all of the different Federal Reserve buildings talking about Bitcoin. And it, it was a statement. And, and, and people who probably had never heard of Bitcoin saw these these billboards. Um, and hopefully it changed some lives. So to me, like that's public art. And it's not for every artist, but like to me, it's important, especially if your goal as a Bitcoin artist is to create more Bitcoiners and spread the message. You know, you know these pieces, for example, I'm going to be selling them in bronze. I'm working with a foundry. And you know, one of the people who reached out to me is from like a giant shitcoin fund. And yeah, I'll take their money. <laughs> but like that doesn't make me happy. Like it doesn't make me unhappy. You know, you know, money's money. But like I would much rather someone who if somebody who had a big library or a art gallery was like, hey, I, we can't afford this. Um, but we really love your artwork, but we'd love to display it in public so that it starts conversation. I'd say, I'll give it to you at cost. Like to me, that that's the difference. Like this is not my day job. This is my side hustle and my passion. And to me, like if I can get my art in a public place where it actually impacts people, that's more important. So if I were to summarize, private art is kind of like stuff that someone would purchase and keep in the room. Right, for a private collection or, or something. private collection. Yeah. But public art is like maybe... Public-facing uh, art. Public-facing art. Maybe yeah. like the city commissions it. Right. Uh, maybe like, oh, no, there's like, who's that? Um, the, stat- the statue in in Hungary? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, no, there's like this mysterious artist who does... Like, Banksy. Banksy. Yeah, Banksy. So that's public, public art, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's more tied to like maybe oh. social commentary. They're trying to make a statement about something. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think they're both important. Like, if I sell one of these to a very wealthy individual, let's say, and they put it prominently in their house and they have other wealthy individuals over and it sparks a conversation about Bitcoin, that makes me happy too. Yeah. You know, I think there's a place for art on all different levels, but you know, if you're not thinking about the impact of your art, then I don't know. I think everybody should think about the impact of their art to some right. extent. Yeah. I mean, cause you, before, like for that, um, you said you were working on, you said, um, you want when people look at that art, you want them to be reminded of their first orange code mo- mm-hmm. moment, right? So there is purpose, there is like meaning behind the art for you, but maybe it's just not something where like everybody can like see it or or appreciate mm-hmm. it. 
Okay, got it. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I'll ask them. I'll ask you maybe like one or two more questions, and then I would love to open it up to to the audience for like some questions for Brecky. But um, yeah, okay, maybe one more question for you. Like, what's your take on NFTs <laughs> in general? Yeah, it's kind of a complicated issue. Um, my priority, the thing I'm passionate about, is bringing sound money to the world. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm in Bitcoin. So at the end of the day, NFTs to me are, a, they're not very important. They're not going to change the world. They're digital trading cards at best. Um, at worst, they can be very scammy. Um, and I, the, I, they, I, I don't think they solve for anything. They don't solve for digital scarcity. You buy an NFT and you get a receipt that you bought something. You get bragging rights. And that's fine. If somebody wants to buy that, it doesn't affect me. It doesn't change the world one way or the other. Um, I think there's a lot of dishonesty around what they are and what they are not. And a lot of people don't understand the difference and they think they're buying ownership of something, but there's no inherent ownership rights baked into these things. So, you know, I think they're here to stay. I think if you find them cool, great, buy something because you enjoy it because it makes you happy, but know what you're buying and know that the real importance, the real, the really important thing right going on is Bitcoin. Um, so I don't know. We can go down the NFT rabbit hole further if we want, but yeah. Um, why don't we open it up for some uh, Q and A? Yeah, we have Mr. Ryan in the back. Hey, buddy. I was, I was waiting for the live Q and A. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, congrats on your uh, pawn shop meme. They're crushed. <laughs> Thank that you. That was hilarious. Memes are also art, and I highly encourage you to make uh, memes. Sir, yeah, no, no, Brad, he is like one of the best meme people online today. I think. Um, Clearly, you're the most passionate artist for like 3D art, even uh, way back in the day. All of your stuff is very, uh, you know, it, it pops out. It's because I can't draw. <laughs> I, uh, Seriously. I think it's very clear that if you want to do something, you can fucking do it. Uh, so it's just so inspirational actually seeing it uh, where you started. You went and, and now you finished with that eye. I got to see the eye in person. Holy shit, was it gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, so congrats on that. Uh, will it ever be displayed? But uh, you know, Bitcoin is for everyone. Have you uh, done anything further with that? The, the campaign we did with Swan? Yeah. We actually, it's kind of been languishing a little bit, but I'd love to get it kind of reinvigorated. It's a great campaign. It's a great um, campaign. If you, I think it's swanbitcoin.com slash Bitcoin is for everyone. It's not exactly a short website. There's a video basically where we reached out to people all across the world and asked them to say the phrase Bitcoin is for everyone in their own language. And we cut together this sort of beautiful video. Um, so that's art too. Film and Bitcoin. Yeah, what about opportunity great. for that? Uh, I don't need some questions. I just got one more. Uh, so what's next uh, for you as an artist? Are you now suddenly like, I can fucking do anything I can do? <laughs> A hundred foot tall, uh, hundred foot tall marble statue. Or? Um, not exactly. Uh, the thing I learned with these with these two is I kind of dove into them without putting a lot of prior thought into them. I didn't do a lot of planning. I didn't model them in clay ahead of time. Um, I just kind of dove in and let's see what happens. Um, and so now I, I, I really want to brush up on the fundamentals of carving stone and modeling and kind of learning the skills I need to take on a project, a hundred foot marble sculpture. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm taking it slowly. Um, I actually hurt my hands pretty badly on, on these two because I carved every day and every night after work. Um, and I kind of ha had like temporary arthritis going on. So I'm working my way back into it. And right now I'm teaching myself letter carving. Um, sort of you see like a monument in those V cut letters that are like perfectly chiseled. That's what I'm working on now. And while I procrastinate and think about the next more complex piece that I actually want to devote six months to a year on. Um, so like Andrew, we all want to hang out with you. So maybe you can combine your art with social and get a class going. Just think about it. Well, Ryan's been trying to get me to work out with him for years. That's right. So, why, so <laughs> why don't you, why don't you come over and we'll do a stone carving workout? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> that way I can keep doing my thing. Uh, yeah. Any other questions for Brittany? You don't have to have questions. It's cool. I have a question. Yes. Um, what have you thought about like the what's what's the relationship between value and art? Uh, 
uh, that's, that was a big question I asked uh, Maynax. And, mm -hmm. You know, he's thought not very deeply about it. And I wonder if you have any thoughts. My dad told me something a long time ago that value or price is just what someone's willing to pay for it. Um, and I made a bet with Carving Stone. My bet was I, I'm betting that Bitcoiners will value proof of work, that they'll value this type of art over other forms of art. And I didn't lose the bet, but I don't think I've won the bet quite yet. Um, I think some do. I think we're still in that phase where people, you know, like pop art, they like what they like, and that's okay. Um, and also, I'm still learning. Like my art isn't <laughs> incredible just yet. Um, and so I think I don't. It's hard, man. And also, art is so subjective. Like I, I think this is cool, but like not everybody wants an eyeball up in their home. Like, and I get that. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We're also in a world where art is valued as a store of value. You know, the entire art market is is not falsified, but it's pumped up and propped up in a lot of ways so that people can store their value in quote unquote valuable pieces of artwork. Now, if we had per if we had perfect money that was equally distributed around the world and everybody was using it, would people use art as a store of value? Or would they just buy art because they like it or because it's a beautifully, you know, masterful painting? I, I don't know. Um, it'll be interesting, I think, to see kind of how the valuation of art changes under a Bitcoin st standard. If there's something like equivalent, like in painting, they do sketches before mm -hmm. you, to kind of test market demand or just kind of. Do you do that? How do you do that in sculpture? It depends. Um, some sculptors will do, you know, tons and tons of drawings ahead of time, like draw the sculpture from every angle. Um, some will model in clay. Some will model in wax. Some, if it's a a giant stone sculpture, they might do a miniature version of it in, still in stone. Um, so it kind of depends and depends on the sculpture itself. If it's very intricate, if it's a human being, um, sometimes they'll, they'll, they will model it. And there's something called a, a pointing machine, um, which is essentially a machine that allows you to take measurements of a model, a full size model and translate it to the, the finished piece. Um, so that's how a lot of sculptures are made or reproductions are made, but yeah. Have you thought about using like uh, these 3D kind of graphics? To, to model, to model. I, I tried it like to me like the tactile element of working with your hands is so important not not necessary but like I just love that so much that I don't want to use 3d modeling software to I'd rather work in clay and, and you know it's just more fun I've, uh, I've read once about mm -hmm. using an armature mm -hmm. for, for sculpting is that particular type? Have you used it? I was just curious. So an armature is like a skeleton, basically, right? right? Um, yeah, you would use that with additive sculpture when you're adding clay on or adding wax on with stone or something like that. You just go with stone. Yeah, exactly. So if you see a stone sculpture and then you're like, how is that standing up? It's because they've essentially calculated the where the force is and it, it does stand up on its own, that sort of thing. Quick question. I've had to learn like a lot of new skills throughout my career. Um, and I don't think I've had to learn anything that was like, I don't want to say a dead or extinct art form, but there's certainly less Marvel carvers than there are like software developers. So when I'm learning new language of like, I know where to go to learn skills. <laughs> I'm just curious, like, if you shop one media, like books or just YouTube videos or reaching out to people, or like, where do you go to learn skills that aren't like readily yeah. accessible at your local public library? Um, I started with YouTube videos. There's not a lot out there, but there's a number of channels where you can watch someone carve something start to finish. And there's a few really great sculptors on there who are just sharing their knowledge. I actually just took the plunge and reached out to some of those same people on Instagram. And I probably bother them all day with questions and they probably hate me. Um, but they've been very nice. It's a small community. Um, and there are like sculpture workshops. Like I don't, when I have time, like I plan to go to Italy and, you know, spend a few weeks there and, carve with them but you know if you know where to look there are if you know they say it's a dying art and i think to some extent it is because it's you know it kind of is passed down person to person but it still exists like there are modern day sculptors out there do you tip them in bitcoin 
<laughs> Not yet. I should. You should. I'm totally I should. Sure. I do orange pill them a little bit, though. Send them your uh, yeah. swan link. Yeah. <laughs> Send them to Terrence. It'll, it'll take, yeah, it'll take sure. care of him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe yeah. just a quick follow-up. Is there, is there a marble scene in L.A.? I thought there were. <laughs> <laughs> there are people like you don't necessarily go to some big one, but is there like a marble scene in L.A.? I don't know if there's one in L.A. per se. I, I buy my stone at a... Um, like a... I don't know what you call it. It's not a quarry, but it's like a stone depot slash gallery up in Ventura. It's like a, you go there, it's like a giant open field with tons of stone that you can buy and there's artists working there. Um, so maybe, but I think sculptors tend to be solitary creatures for obvious reasons. All right. Well, um, I think we can wrap it up there. Let's give Kirky a hand. Oh, wait. Also, oh, sorry. Uh, I don't have enough for everybody, but I made these prints a long time ago. If anyone would like yeah. some free Bitcoin art for your office, home, or public place, uh, first come, first serve. <laughs> Thanks, Kirky. Thanks, everybody.